Most people think this diagnosis are very far away from us, but that is not the case for women out there. For women, we have a specific diagnosis that is, that is caused by the gender bias. And my question to that is, how and why is it different for women? In the US, 12 million people are misdiagnosed each year. Women have a 20 to 30 percent more likely chance of being misdiagnosed. Now let's take a look at a case. Michelle. Michelle started showing symptoms when she was just around 14. These symptoms were of painful and frequent bowel movements. She did it for two years until one day she finally continued walking. So she ended up in the emergency room. She got tested and the doctor said nothing was conclusive. And she was told to go home, take some rest, take some painkillers, some aspirin. But for Michelle, none of that worked. So for Michelle, what did she do? She went to go find a doctor. And doctor after doctor, which are all male, told her the same thing. It's all in your head, they said. However, she knew that was not true. Until she finally found a male doctor, sorry, a female doctor, who started with her for colonoscopy and found out because of all the delayed diagnosis, her entire left side of her colon had been healed. And then she was diagnosed with, with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and ulcerative, ulcerative colitis. However, Michelle is not alone. For Michelle, there are many other cases of such the standard definition of misdiagnosis is saying that an incorrect diagnosis cause that is concluded to a illness or a problem. But when I refer to misdiagnosis, I am not talking about, oh yes, the doctor was tired, oh yes, the doctor misread the results, or the doctor was too confident in the diagnosis. No, I am talking about the doctor having this presumption of females that affect their medical decisions. A study from the new but from the University of Copenhagen found that women are diagnosed later than men for over 700 diseases, one of which, being the most common, is heart attacks and heart disease, which is the number one leading killer in the U.S. Women are 50% more likely to be misdiagnosed after initial heart attack. That means one in two women who have a heart attack are initially misdiagnosed. And well, why is that? How does that happen? And what does that cause to our community? It is a strain on the healthcare system. So first, when you go to your doctor, when you have an issue, you go to your doctor, right? And then you get a diagnosis, and then you know, hopefully a treatment comes out or something to help you. But when you cannot receive a proper treatment, there is this need for you to go to the doctor over and over again and that puts big strain onto our healthcare systems in places like Canada and the U.S. where they have big waiting lists. And that wastes money, time, and energy for all those people involved. And that is one of the contributing factors to why healthcare systems are broken in certain places. But what is the specific gender bias that I'm talking about? In a 2008 study, textbooks that were recommended by the top 20 most prestigious universities across Canada, Europe, and the U.S. found that these textbooks, they show male anatomy three times as frequent as female anatomy. Doctors are trained more about the, fem more about the male anatomy than they are for the female anatomy. And well, you know, the idea going all the way back to ancient Greece that female bodies are simply a variation of the males, this is the reason why we have doctors that don't understand us. The universities that are producing the coming generation of the top doctors out there, they're being taught more about the male anatomy than they are for the female. The researchers have found that there are sex differences in every, if not all, tissues and organs in our bodies. Only one out of eight women who experience a heart attack actually have typical heart attack symptoms. But when we think of a heart attack, what is the first thought that comes to our mind? Chest pain? 
heartburn or shortness of breath, yeah, those things, they don't happen to women as often. For women, the actual symptoms of a heart attack are jaw pain and joint pain. These issues are not being diagnosed properly, making doctors feel like, yes, I made, it, I made a proper diagnosis by giving someone painkillers. In fact, they have not. These problems that could be prevented, but are not. Another contributing factor to this, underrepresentation of women in research. Now, in the U.S., about 15.8% of the population is women. And while only 41.2% of clinical trials, they have included female participants. And for clinical trials, people are more willing to fund for male studies than women. Even if they are in certain things that are more common than female, we don't understand that because they're not funded as much. Mm -hmm. And in 1933, the U.S. Finance Service registered this as a problem where they passed a law from the National Institute of Revitalization Act that said it was illegal to not include female participants in federally funded clinical trials. But are all clinical trials federally funded? No. And just like I previously said, because of that, people privately funded clinical trials are more likely to be funded for men. Now, let's take a look at another case. Just like Michelle, Jackie started showing symptoms when she was around 16. These symptoms were of chronic kidney issues, fevers, terrible menstrual pain, and joint pain. So, just like Michelle, Jackie went around looking for doctors. And her first primary care doctor told her that she was depressed and that she needed antidepressants. Those did not help. So Jackie went around for the next few years finding another doctor that could help her. When she was referred to a friend for a doctor in a wealthy suburb, that doctor got one correct diagnosis. It was endometriosis. And she got surgery for it, which relieved her menstrual pain. However, her other symptoms, the chronic kidney issues, the fevers, the joint pain, it did not end. And then again, she goes back finding doctors until she finally finds a female doctor that cares about her symptoms. And this female doctor, she looks at her records and determines that, yes, something is wrong. She suspected that she might have lupus. And then, yes, she gets tested for it. And boom, she has lupus. Jackie finally ended her decade-long battle with doctors trying to convince them, yeah, yes, my symptoms are real. Y yes, no, it's not just in my head. It's real. These are real issues out there. But I want to find a solution to this. And one of the points I could do is for everyone here, you can help yourselves. as well self-advocacy. And for self-advocacy, well, this might sound kind of weird or strange, but that entails Googling. Google your symptoms before you go to your doctors. Try and understand what is going on. So then when you're actually at your doctors, you can articulate more. What the doctors need is not a story. They need symptoms. Doctors are trained through understanding and figuring out, speculating symptoms that lead to a direct illness or disease. Not that, oh, your story, blah, 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 this and that happened. No, try and be able to articulate as much as your doctor, and that can help. And if that doesn't work, just like Michelle and Jackie, sometimes you might need to consult a female doctor. Maybe they understand your needs better. But this issue is not so much personal. It is also a societal and fundamental issue that we have not solved. And, you know, sounds kind of cliche, but it's true. Hey, we need to spread awareness. We need to make people understand what is it that causes women to have these issues? Why are we targeted? Why are we the targeted demographic for these issues? Train doctors in textbooks that teach not only male anatomy, but the female anatomy. When I was Googling for this BPT, when I searched up anatomies, I found that most of them were actually male anatomy. And that means that we, again, are not trained enough. Doctors are just normal people. We're not taught enough about female anatomy. Trained doctors in that we all, female and male, have sex differences that you need to take. You need to take in consideration for our symptoms, for our treatment. And I want to end this with saying, this diagnosis is very real and dangerous. 
This could happen to you. It could be your loved one. It could be your family. It is such a big issue. It is very dangerous. But how come it's not talked about now? We talk in the right now. It's the 21st century, right? 2023. We talk about fem feminism, and you see it everywhere. But yeah, this is such a big issue that is clearly not talked about. It's legal, but not talked about. It. And yes, spreading awareness is not a day, not a year thing, but you can. We can do it. If there is a goal, there's always a way to achieve it.